ready to make a difference in the lives of fathers and their families? The Show Up Dad podcast empowers the next generation of dads to lead with confidence and love. Your support and our amazing partners help us to create lasting impact. Consider donating 50, 100, or 250 to provide a dad with essential resources. And speaking of incredible partners, let us introduce you to Tallman Equipment. Since 1952, Tallman Equipment has been standing taller than the rest of competition in lineman tools. They provide top quality equipment and solutions for linemen, ensuring safety and efficiency on the job. If you're in need of reliable and durable tools, look no further than Tallman Equipment. Also, don't forget to check out our online shop at theshowupshop.myshopify.com for high quality products that support our cause. From t-shirts and hoodies, stickers, and even children's clothes, we have something for everyone. Not only will we be showing your support for our cause, but you'll also be getting a high quality product that you'll love. To learn more about what we do, visit theshowupdadfoundation.org. You can also find Lyman tools at tallmanequipment.com. Thank you for your generosity, and let's empower dads and build stronger families. It's like this this thing that comes upon us, and we cannot make rash decisions. Exactly. Right? We're, we're more led by our feelings and in the moment than actually what's doing what is right. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that's what happens with a lot of people when they are drinking because they say that drinking is actually a symptom of something deeper, if that makes right. sense. No, yeah. it does. And there is a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I finally let go of most of it. Mm. Now, Jesse, going back, I want to ask you about your relationship with your father, if you don't mind sharing that. Right. How was that? How was that dynamic? Honestly, my relationship with my father was a, was a pretty good relationship. I can't, I don't have very many complaints. If I have one complaint, I just wish he would have played with us more. But for the most part, my father was always there. He worked yeah. hard every day. You know, he would make sure that there was always food on the table. We always had shelter, you know, everything that we needed. We weren't rich Mm -hmm. and we weren't dirt poor, but we had what we needed and we never missed out on it because my dad always got up every morning to make sure that, hey, you know, they're not going to go without. But I could honestly say that my relationship with my father growing up was a pretty good one. And I mean, we had it. We had our moments, you know, especially in the yeah. teenage years where I rebelled and I did that for so long where we weren't getting along or speaking a word to each other. But, you know, what was pretty crazy, though, too, is that like it wasn't really until I became a father myself mm-hmm. that years later, I, I actually went up to my dad and I, I apologized for everything that I had put him through. And I told him, you know what? Now I totally understand where you are coming from when I was growing up. I didn't understand that growing up. But now that I'm a father myself, now I see why you were you were only able to provide us with so much and give us so much. But overall, he was an amazing man. Taught me how to, you know, taught me the importance of hard work at an early age. Mm-hmm. You know, and to this day I I still, you know, continue with that what he had taught me. Mm-hmm. Now you said that your parents were you, you didn't come from a broken home. Your parents were together yeah, and everything. They were together, how was, all together. How was his dynamic with your mom? Did they did they fight in front of you guys? Were they were they good? Did they show you how to resolve issues? Like like how was that dynamic that you saw? So the dynamic between my father and my mom was actually a good one. They would always you know one thing I can thank them for a lot is that whatever issues that they were going through at the time, they made sure not to show us. They did that behind closed doors and they never. I can't ever really remember once my parents ever fighting in front of us and we would see it. Mm. My dad respected my mom and my mom respected my dad. And, you know, it was awesome watching them because it was like the best team ever, you know? Yeah. My, my dad would go out to work. My mom would wake up with my dad, cook him his breakfast, lunch, send them off with this prayer to work. He'd come home. Dinner was made ready on the table for him to eat dinner. And it was, honestly, it was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So how did that go from having this, this great example? Cause I mean, that, that sounds like a great example, like that, a a, a great, you had a great foundation of, of what parenting should be and how a husband and, and, and a wife should get along. Right. 
Now, how did that translate with your past relationship with the the mother of your, your children? Like, was there certain flags that you saw that you're like, man, this just isn't right? Or, or how did, how did that go? You know what I mean? So how it went about is that you're right. There was certain flags. Eventually, there was a point where there just was no respect hmm. between her and I and our relationship. And if you ask me, respect goes a very long way. Because that's yes. one thing that us as men, we want the most is we want to be respected. Absolutely. You know, I can give a woman all my love and all my attention and affection. But if I'm not getting the respect, it's like, what am I doing this for then? Mm. You know, so that's kind of where, you know, things went south for us in a sense. Yeah. But for the most part, everything that I saw growing up, I, I took it with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have it with me to this day. Yeah, for sure. And I, I like that you said respect because that is the deepest need for a man. Exactly. Right? We need to have that respect. Uh, a lot of times when I ask men, we're dealing with our, our, our foundation and I'm counseling guys, I ask them, well, what does respect look like to you? You know, and they're like, wow, I've never even really thought about it. Right. You know? So I ask you that question. What is respect to you? What is respect to me mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, we get along well. Mm -hmm. I respect your boundaries. You're going to respect my boundaries. Mm -hmm. If you know what sets me off, then you're not going to come at me with that. If I know something sets you off, I'm not going to come at you with that. There's mm -hmm. no need for that. But for me, respect, it, you know, what it means to me as well is that, you know, hey, we're both the team. Our job is now to raise these kids right. So we need to, we need ourselves need to start respecting one another so they can start seeing that respect. And then later on down the line, they start taking it down with them. Because if mm. there's no respect now, they don't see it now. They're never going to have it. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. Seeing that big picture. I think that's one of the biggest things I even tell the apprentices where I work at is you guys right. need to stop having tunnel vision and see the big picture. And it's the same exactly. thing in life in marriage you have to see the bigger picture you know what i mean how we're what we're doing right now how it's affecting the future right. generation right exactly no that's good that you brought that up man because that's such a great point jesse they see us they, they see how we respond they see how we react i think more and more couples need to learn to respond whether uh, other than react right i think that's the, the more appropriate way to to do things is learning how to respond versus being reactionary all the time exactly and that's a good point you bring up there david because i struggled with that for a long time because you know i wouldn't respond i would react and then before you know it it's like whoa what's going on here now we're fighting about something new here mm -hmm. it went both ways it wasn't just me yeah for sure. You know? Yeah, no, that's, that's a, that's so huge in marriage and stuff like that. I mean, just, mm -hmm. just being able to give each other grace, right? Have to. Yeah. Cause, cause we're not perfect. We're going to still make mistakes. You know, you're going to make mistakes in your fatherhood and, 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 and being a husband, a father, all these different things and being a provider, we're going to make mistakes, right? Exactly. And we, are. we need to show that grace to each other. You know, we absolutely do. And, you know, another thing, too, we are going to make mistakes, but it's what we do with these mistakes. Mm -hmm. Are we going to learn from them or are we going to continue to repeat them? Mm -hmm. You know, me, I'd rather just continue to learn from them and go on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we talked about you being a journeyman lineman. That's how I met you. Um, how has that influenced your approach to fatherhood and parenting? Are you seeing a correlation between mentoring apprentices and your fathering? And do you, have you seen that connection yet? I've seen it. I honestly, mm -hmm. I, I've seen it a lot because, you know, the apprentices and groundmen, you know, won't understand certain things. They'll have questions about just about everything that you can think of. And you go home and your kids are doing the same thing too. So it's like, you know, being the man that I am and being the fact that I am a father, mm -hmm. I I take all that seriously because I want my kids, I want nothing but the best for my kids. I want to see them succeed. 
So the, yeah. I think the same thing to the apprentices and groundmen. I want to see you guys succeed. Now, you may see me come off as a fireball sometimes, hey, but if I'm not doing this because I don't love you, it's like I tell them, you know, you might see me yell, freak out here and there, but I'm not doing it because I'm singling you out because I don't, because I hate you. Maybe by me freaking out and yelling at you will help you retain some information. You'll probably look back and be like, the only reason why I remember is because he was yelling at me. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't like to get to that point, but. You know, you start seeing these things where, like, you know, this fatherly trait comes into play at work just as much as it does at home. You know, and it's it's pretty awesome to see because even like even before I started having apprentices, I was already, you know, going on my off time to LA Trade Tech where I went to line school. And I'll go over there and I'll give a hand, you know, I'll give them a hand. I'll go ahead and talk to them about the trade and what it's like, you know, what it's like working on the outside with the contractors and all that. And like I said, same thing, too, that I want for my kids and I want for the groundmen and apprentices to succeed. I want these kids to succeed as well, too. So that's mm. it, it does. You know, you the, the father, he never stops, Dave. <laughs> it never <laughs> stops. It never and that's and that's who we are. We're, we're, we're mentors, we are. you know. Um, one of the big things I've seen is. With the apprentices, when they ask the why. Right. I mean, isn't that what our kids tell us? You know, why? But why? But why? Exactly. You know what I mean? And um, I find it uh, kind of amusing that before I would be like telling my kids because I said so. That's why. Or right. or that's telling true. the apprentices, just do it that way. You know what I mean? Don't don't you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> don't ask me why. Just do it. I'm telling you to do it. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. the transition and going through all this growth and everything that I've done, I understand that I got to give them that why, you know? Exactly. No, and I, and I get what you're saying too, Dave, because for me, it's really hard to give them that why. Because just mm-hmm. like you, I grew up where like you didn't ask why. You were told <laughs> to do something. You weren't going to ask why. You were just going to get up and start doing it. And if you didn't, God forbid you went that route because forget <laughs> it. But <laughs> yeah. you know, I find it hard sometimes with my kids where they're like, why, why? And I'm like, no, it was because I said so. Uh-huh. That's it. And, you know, I, I don't sometimes I don't feel like I need to be giving you an explanation as to why I want you to do something is just do it and get it over with. Mm-hmm. But the same thing kind of goes with apprentices at times. Sometimes mm-hmm. I got to explain myself as to why, because they need to know, you know, what's the reason for this madness. And there's other times where I'm like, no, I don't need to tell you why. Like, just shut up and do it with all due respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it, it's crazy. You know what I mean? And as, as you progress in fathering and you progress in this industry as a journeyman lineman, you know, it's going to come. I mean, it, it is. is a life long transition It is. and coming out the gates, you're not going to know everything. It's the same thing with the trade. It's the same thing in father. You're not going to know everything, bro. No, you're not. And you, you know, know what I mean? Little by little, I'm picking up on everything. It's just like, you know, it's just like what I was told when I was the first step apprentice. You're going to learn your most the first two years you've been topped out than what you did the whole three and a half, four years that you were an apprentice. And they're right because every day I'm still learning something new. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, that's uh, that's that's crazy. You know, and, and you are asking questions, right? You're yeah, absolutely. I do. Yeah, I have to. I think it's important, the correlation, since we're talking about line trade and fathering, right? And I just want to point this out real quick, Jesse. I think it's important that even with our children, right, <clears throat> that they trust us. They trust right. us enough to come to us and ask those questions or to tell us things, right? right. It's the same thing with an apprentice. You know what I mean? You have a, a a journeyman that's nice and a journeyman that's a jerk, right? Who are they going to stay away from? They're going to, they're going to stay away from the journeyman who treats them like crap. Right. And they're going to go to the journeyman who they trust, you know what I mean? And they're going to ask questions there and stuff like that. So I think trust is a major thing for children as well. And as far as our apprentices go also, you know what I mean? No, it is. Absolutely. That, that goes a very long way, Mm -hmm. you know, just for like a good minute there, for instance, like my, my eldest, Mm -hmm kind of having a hard time coming to me at times like when I became a single father and I was like you know why do you I'm like why do you need to hesitate to come come to me about anything son mm-hmm. you're my son I love you no matter what you did or what's going on you need to talk to me because how else are we going to resolve this mm-hmm. 
And, you know, little by little, he started gaining the trust and whatnot, because, you know, it's just like like the same thing at work, too. I want him to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I want the apprentices and groundmen to succeed in life, too, in this Mm -hmm. trade. I think whenever there's trust that's trying to be built, you can supplicate a lot of trust that that's been lost or hasn't been built up yet. Cause they say trust is built in drops and lost in buckets. Right. right. You can supplicate it by truth. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and just being truthful and being like, Hey man, I, even with the apprentices, you know, when you don't know something, be like, Hey man, I don't know, but I'll, I'll ask somebody who knows and I'll get yeah, back exactly. with you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Same thing with our kids. Our kids know when we're we're BSing them. <laughs> no, they know all the my eldest knows all the time. Oh, for sure. You know, for that's sure. why I can't even get away with it anymore. There's no point in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Exactly. Now we talked about you being a first generation Mexican American. You know, I know there's there's kinds of uh, stigmas that go around that, machismo, all that different stuff, right? Because I come from a Hispanic uh background right. as well. You know what I mean? And uh, where we're taught, you know, you don't cry, you don't show your emotions, all that different stuff, right? How has that cultural background shaped your parenting style? And what are some of the things that you kept and had to change because of it? So one of the things that changed my life with, you know, Mm -hmm. with that culture style is that when you're the eldest before, Mm -hmm. you technically just bumped up to being their dad in a sense. Yeah. You go to any party with a Mexican household, like for mine, for instance. Mm-hmm. you're going to be in charge of taking care of your siblings. Your parents are not going to watch them. You're going to watch them. And if something happens to them, it's going to be your ass. You bet it's mm-hmm. going to be. So that's kind of one thing, you know, I, I took from, you know, coming up at the Mexican household and being the eldest is that I was already kind of getting those fatherly skills without even knowing that I was getting them. Mm-hmm. You know, Little by little, you know, I was bringing them on with my boys, you know, mm-hmm. so. I guess you can't say at a very young age, I was already pretty much being taught how to be a dad in a mm-hmm. sense. Because yeah. They, they had high standards. You're the eldest. You, you got the highest standards on you. Oh, my dude. <laughs> my, uh, that was one of the biggest complaints of my oldest sister. Cause I had uh, two twin sisters that are older and then it was me. I was a middle child. And then I had my younger brother who passed away. And uh, that was one of the biggest complaints. My eldest sister, Audrey, would say she'd be like man she's like i got blamed for everything i didn't even do it and i got hit you know what i mean it's just the way it was you know what i mean it was always blaming and even to the point where when they were gone and i was now the eldest because i had my younger brother i remember this specific incident um we're in the mountains because that's where we grew up there was this lake my brother shot this duck and my dad was one of the big advocates of you shoot something, you better go get it. It's in the middle of this, right. this, this little lake and there's ice on there. It's cold as hell. Right. Right. So he's like, I don't care how you get it. You're going to go get it. Well, what does my brother do? He's, 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 you know, he was a savage straight up right. gets in his chonies, dude. And he starts <laughs> side stroking to go get it. My dad shows up again to make sure everything's okay. Right. And he tells me, where's your brother? And I was like, He's going to go get the duck like you asked. He's like, oh, if he drowns, it's on you. And then he drove. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, what the hell? You know right, I mean? right. <laughs> he was so angry that I didn't step up to the plate and, and go, you know, yeah. uh, and get it for him. But, you know, as as an older brother, it's like, oh, serves you well. Who has you shooting something that we can't get to? You right. know what I mean? And um, it was kind of funny, you know, it, it was kind of funny. But uh, I, I remember that clearly, you know, he's like, if he drowns yeah. and dies, it's on you. And I'm like, yep. damn, I didn't ask for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but uh, what are some valuable lessons you learned from being the oldest sibling, you know, since you had four? And uh, how have they influenced your role as a father now that we're talking about that? You know, you you being the eldest and learning, you know, how to be a father through that. You know, how how has that influenced you now? So one of the things that I learned is that being the eldest, you're going to be the one that's going to show the example for everybody else. Mm. Okay. So right off the bat, being the eldest, I had to show the example for my younger siblings. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, don't do this. Do that. Do good in school. Don't hang out with that crowd. Just stuff like that. And, you know, that's something that, you know, I brought on with my kids. You know, I got to show them the example. 
Mm-hmm. Because it just goes with anything else. If you don't show them an example or you are not a good example to them, then it's all going to go bad. Mm -hmm. It's like I was talking about the whole respecting. I got to show them, you know, a good example that, hey, respect starts at a very young age. If I don't show them now, who's going to show them? Nobody. Mm, I like that. No, you have to be the example. I had to be the example. And, you know, it was just one of those things where, like, you had to, no matter what, you had to set a good example because, in a sense, if you weren't setting a good example towards them, mm-hmm. you were already failing them. If it, you, you kind of pick up where, I, where I'm getting at with this. Yeah, for sure. It's crazy. Jesse is like, we always talk about how we, you know, especially when we don't have parents that were a good example or whatever, right? And right. a lot of times on this broadcast, we say, you know, we never have a blueprint on, on parenting, right? Right. Everything in life has already shaped us and equipped us. To be able to do that. Exactly. Everything that God's already done in our lives, you know, look at you. I mean, learning to be the example, you know what I mean? Um, learning to take responsibility for your siblings. You're already getting training. Do you know what I mean? So there is examples if you're willing to examine your life. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy how you say that because looking back, you don't think about that stuff. No. Like looking back at how I was the eldest, I had to take care of my younger siblings and I didn't think about it as me parenting them. And fast forward now to like 20 some years later, you know, I can honestly tell you, hey, they were not knowingly, but getting me ready for this in a sense, Mm -hmm. you know, and it worked out great because, I mean, I could honestly tell you myself, I am a damn good father to my boys. Mm. You know, I've come a long way. I, I, you know, I faced a lot and, you know. It's like my kid tells me, he's like, I love the way you are, dad. You know, you've come a long way and, you know, I like what we got here. And I'm like, you know, son, that means a lot to me because I've been working very hard to be at this point. And here we are now. You coming up to me, thanking me for it. Mm. Amen. That means brother. a lot to me. For sure. For sure. Now, speaking of, of coming a long way and stuff like that, how did you come across the podcast, you know, and what specific aspects of you know, all the episodes that we have resonated with you. So I came across this podcast, I want to say maybe October or November of 2020. I was on my drive up to Vegas to go to work. It was Monday Mm. morning. So I usually come home on the weekends and come Monday morning. I, you know, I split, I go out there early. So I was on Spotify listening to the same playlist I've been listening to for the last 30, 40 years. <laughs> I'm like, all right, you know, well, what else is on there besides the same songs I've been listening to? So I started typing up Lyman in, in Spotify. Well, sure enough, your show popped up. Mm. And after that, I started listening to it. And I haven't stopped not once. That very first time I listened, I believe, was the very first episode with Richard Monzingo, right? That was his name? Oh, Will. Yeah, Will Monzingo. Yep. Yeah, that was the very first one. And oh, my God, that one caught my attention a lot. Mm -hmm. To this day, it still catches my attention. You know, everything that that man went through to be where he's at now, it was just like, holy hell, like, how did you make it? Mm. You know, but thank God that he is here because I would have never heard his story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as he had more guests come up on the show, it like, it opened my eyes up to a lot of things like, you know, taking better care of my own health. Like I never thought about that stuff. I could have cared less about my health. But now that I got two boys that come and greet me every day when I walk in through that door, when I come home from work, I got to be healthy for them. I have to take care of myself. So, you know, there was a lot that, you know, your show has done to me in the mm-hmm. sense of like, you know, I got to do right for my boys. Mm-hmm. So I can be here for them. Hmm, man, that's that's amazing. I, I thank you for that for sure. No, you know, um, it's crazy that you mentioned Will Monzingo. Um, mm. he's actually the assistant director at uh, Cal Nevada um, Woodland Yard. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy how everything came full circle. Um, yeah, absolutely. I remember when I dropped that first episode that you're talking about. Um, my brother had just passed away. Right. You know, he had just passed away and uh um, condolences is still. Yeah, it's been three years. I mean, he's just, right. he's just what like three days ago, I believe, is when he 
passed away, you know, three years ago. It's kind of kind of crazy, you know. The wound is still still there, obviously, no, I, you know. I, I bet I bet it is. But uh man, one of the things that, you know, just to touch on that, when my brother used to tell me when I'd ask him, there's gotta be more than life, bro. Cause he was a workaholic too. He dealt with okay. his own issues and uh, he was a lineman and he would tell me, man, all I got is 20 more years and then I could retire. That's it. <laughs> He's like, then I'm done with this damn shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, gosh, darn dude, looking back, hindsight's 2020, the homie didn't have 20 years. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's crazy. And what I'm getting at is it's never too late to start. Cause we don't know when our time, our number is going to be punched. No, and absolutely. We never know. That's why, like, for me, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, when I was drinking, there would be a lot of stupid little things that would, like, get the better of me, and I'd be pissed off about it all day. All oh, the kids did this. All oh, that apprentice did that. And I'd be going off. And now life is too beautiful to be pissed off all the time. You mm-hmm. got to enjoy every minute of it. Because, like you said, you never know when your card's going to be punched out. We never know. And regardless of whatever it is, what we're doing, we got to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. It's too short and too beautiful. Not just just to let it slip by your hands. And the crazy part about it is that we don't realize how fast life comes at us. And it comes by quick. Like just yesterday when I was at drop off for my, for my kids, I was looking at my 10 year old. I'm like, dude, 10 years ago, you were like, yay big. You fit in my arms. I can't even lift you up now because you're so big. Mm. But it went by like that. It went by so quick where I'm like, man, you know, don't get me wrong. I've cherished more than enough, but I still feel like I didn't cherish enough. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's, you know, that's just one of those things where like, it's, it's too beautiful to be pissed off all the time. You got to mm-hmm. make the best of it, regardless of whatever might be thrown at you. Exactly. I think the more and more I'm starting to realize, the older I get, the more wiser I get. I'm starting to see that, you know, people are incomplete. They are. We are are broken, literally. And, you know, life has the ability to just really beat us down even, even worse, right? Right. And to really harp on those wounds that are already there. Now... With that being said, since we are incomplete, God's design for us was to become whole. Exactly. You know, and, and that could only happen with, you know, our, our with, 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 with faith in, in the Lord reading, right? right? Uh, it, it happens. God uses our spouse to complete us. He also uses our children, believe it or not, nice. you know, whenever you see your child and there's something you 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 just notice and it just bothers you and it really just drives you to the edge where you're on the you know edge of your seat and you just want to strangle right. this kid those are the moments that we need to sit back and ask God okay God what do I need to learn in this moment what are you trying to reveal to me what are you showing in me that I need to get rid of you know and it's having that level of self awareness to be able to stop yourself and ask those questions during that time right. and allowing the Holy spirit to reveal to you, Hey man, you have anger issues, brother. You have past hurts. Right. You know what I mean? This is, this is something that I don't want in you. And this child is bringing it out of you. And this is something I need to get out of you because you need to become whole for that child, for the next generation. Exactly. You know, no, and you're exactly right. It's like they say, you know, you know, our kids are here to pretty much make us into what God really wants us to be. And I'm a firm believer in it because before yeah. I had kids, I was running wild. I was getting drunk all the time. I was going to the all nighters, you know, going on my Harley every which to every which party. And then, you know, fast forward to 2012 and here comes my firstborn. And here I am like, whoa, what's going on here? I'm not mm-hmm. used to changes, but honestly, those are the best damn changes I've ever had in my entire life because they made me into this person that I am now, mm. you mm. know? Yeah. They for made sure. me to be this way in a sense. Now you said going back, Jesse, that you listened to the one that had great profound 
uh, uh, you know, that, that actually had impact on you as your, in your journey of fatherhood was that Will Monzingo episode, right? What, uh, what about that episode affected you? If you don't mind. Uh, what about that episode affected me was pretty much how he was telling me how he was discussing in his story, how as an apprentice, he was already going through these marital struggles. Yeah. Not only that, but it continued even when he topped out. Mm. It's like, holy hell, you know, it, 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 it comes to mind because for most of us, you know, we get we do better not just for ourselves, but for our family, for our children. So we can yeah. provide them with more so we can provide them with better. And, you know, hearing what he was going through at that time was like, holy hell, because I was already kind of starting going through stuff like that myself, you know. Yeah. And that really stuck with me because the way I kind of saw it was like, you know, it kind of sucks that like, you know, here we are as men trying to provide, trying to do the best for our families. And then, you know, right in the middle of, you know, us, us getting a chance at a great career, here comes a divorce, here comes a separation. It's like, whoa, you know, where's all this coming from? Like, I thought we agreed that, you know, hey, you help me work on this goal, I'll help you work on your goal, and we'll live happily ever after. But that's not always the case. And that really stuck with me to this day because it's like, whoa, you know, am I going to be this guy where, like, I go out and work and do what I got to do and then just come home just to be divorced too? It's like, come on. Yeah. You no? Know? That really got me hard because I was like, whoa, you know. Mm -hmm. Here I thought we we're doing the most noblest of things of like, you know, putting ourselves on the lives, risking our lives daily, putting our bodies through a lot of abuse. And for what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, all the accolades, everything we do, right, isn't necessarily going to make our spouse, who if we look back to what I said, right. is incomplete as well, is not going to complete her. Exactly. You know? And uh, unfortunately, we as as husbands, as, as leaders, as mentors, as fathers, you know, with our spouse, we think that we can supplicate by creating a better life, creating a better atmosphere, doing doing all these different things. Right, you right. Know, when deep down inside, they got, you know, just like you're working on it, they got to work on their stuff, too, because exactly. that's all marriages is two incomplete, imperfect people that came together and joined together. Right. You know? So they got to work on their stuff. We got to work on our stuff. And together we make each other complete. Exactly. You know? That's the way it should be. It's a yeah. team effort. Hey, I agree with you. God did not put us here to live our lives the rest of by ourselves, the rest of our lives. No, he put us here because we were going to eventually partner up with somebody and start mm -hmm. our own team to go with it as well. Absolutely. They said that the worst punishment you can give a human being is actually mm -hmm. solitary confinement because as humans, we were made for connection. And when you Absolutely. take that away, that's like the worst punishment our capital system can give. It's crazy, huh? It is. Absolutely. Yeah. But just to take that a step forward, think about all the lonely line wives that are out there. Exactly. They don't have their husband to live life with. No, nah, they right? don't. And one thing that I will say this right now. And I say with the utmost respect is that my hat goes off to all those line wives out there. I've Absolutely. never been married myself, but my hat goes off to them because day in and day out, they're the ones getting up, taking they're taking on the man role, the male role at the house while their husbands are out working hundreds, if not thousands of miles away. So, you know, thank you, ladies, for all that you do. I, I couldn't thank you more than enough. I mean, like I said, I'm not married. But I see it for what it is. And, you know, you guys are all doing a good job out there. Yeah, for sure. You know, <laughs> my sentiments exactly. Hats off. Kudos for sure. Because it is not an easy job. They no. don't get a break. No, they don't. You know, we go, we may work 16, 18, 20, you know, 24 and 8, whatever. Right. But eventually you're going to get a break. They don't. No, they don't. <laughs> Absolutely. They don't. You know. And then when you come home and you're a critical husband like I was, and you start freaking bitching and moaning, well, why are the dishes dirty? Why why isn't the, the lawn mowed? Why is this? Why is that? And it's like, right. dude, do you have any idea, you idiot, how hard they've been working? 
and you come home and you start degrading them. And you know what I mean? It's like, gosh, man, think about it, dude. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. <laughs> so that's kind of one of those things where I, I've learned to like, you know, stop and think about what I'm going to say first, because I've been a stay at home dad before. And I'll tell you right now, that was not easy by any means. You know what? Screw that. Go, go have me work on a 55 foot pole with double circuits on it. Let's do that all day. Put me yeah. back in the house. Forget it. I mean, I figured it out somewhat, but <laughs> yeah, let's just say it wasn't that easy. No, for sure. Hey, Jesse. So how is dedicated now that you have more time, right? And you're dedicating right. more time to your boys. How has that affected your personal growth and overall well-being? Because it seems to me like, man, you, you just seem a lot happier. So one of the cool things about it is that Dude, mm-hmm. I get I get to relive my childhood with my with my two boys. Whatever I dreamt about or whatever I couldn't do as a as a boy, I get to do it now with my two boys. And I'll tell you right now, dude, it is so much fun having them around. Like, what was it? Not this August, we went to Yellowstone. My eldest had a blast. My youngest was not so much, but <laughs> dude, it was awesome, you know. This was like the first vacation we'd gone on by ourselves where I was in control of it, where I was having to make the decisions and all that. But it was fun. You know, they they had a blast. And, you know, I've taken them to like Monster Jams. I've taken them to like, you know, the Miramar Air Show. I, I try to take them to as much as many things as I could that I couldn't go to as a kid. And we yeah. just make the most of them. We have a blast. Mm, man, so that's what, like how was Yellowstone for you? That sounds interesting. Oh, dude, three days. We were there. We got there Monday. Okay, on Saturday, we were at the park for three days. That yeah. still was not enough for how much beauty is out there. For all the sights that you're gonna see, three days is not enough. You need more time out there. And I'll tell you right now, I got to go back. It was awesome. I mean, I got to bond with my boys a lot. You know, because, you know, being at work and then coming home, you know, you don't really get that bond as much. Mm -hmm. But I got to bond with them a lot. They had a blast. I mean, it was awesome. I I highly recommend it. You got to go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, That's what that's next. Our list. I went there when I was real little. My uh, that's one thing that my parents made it made it happen every single year. We went on a big family vacation, you know, and. I don't know. My dad would just save for the year and he was a blue collar guy. You know, he didn't make a lot of right, money, right. but he made it happen. He's like, Hey kids, let's go. We're got two weeks off and guess what? We're going to Canada. We're going to Yellowstone. We're going to Mount Rushmore. You know, he took yeah, us to all the sites. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of like where I'm at now. We're like, okay, well now that I'm topped out, I'm not an apprentice. Now I could ask for whatever time I need off in the summer mm-hmm. without very, very many issues. So I think, Maybe this summer coming up, maybe, I don't know, thinking about either hitting up Rushmore, maybe New York. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that'd be awesome, dude. Um, yeah. it's, it's different than like going like to the movies, right? Right. Or taking them to an amusement park or something like that. Because when you start taking them to these national forests and you have the drive out there and the alone time spending in hotels and stuff like that, like you said, you're actually able to bond without the all the other distractions going on, you know? No, exactly. And and that's, you know what, that's absolutely true because here I am now in August, I took him to Yellowstone. I got Mm -hmm. to take him to see one of God's many creations. Mm -hmm. Can we go to no amusement park where it was going to be quick or no, I didn't take him to the arcade or miniature golf. No, I took him to, the national park. I took him out in the wilderness to go see, you know, one of his, one of our Lord's many creations and they got to enjoy it all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I said, you know, it's funny how my out, my youngest was not the one having the most fun. Yeah. They came that we went to go horseback riding. He didn't want to get on any of those horses at all. Well, I bribed them into doing it. And sure enough, he does it. And who had the most fun? He had the most fun out of all (laughs) of us. They put him on a horse by himself with one of the guides. And all he kept doing was just talking the guides here. You can hear him as I'm back like 10, 15 horses behind. I can just hear him asking him, talking to him about every little thing. I'm like, oh, my God. 
Talk about the one that didn't want to go, but he's having the black, he's having the most fun out of all of us now, isn't he? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's crazy, you know, just thinking about that, right? And the correlation I have with that is a lot of times, you know, in our own walk, right? A lot of times we don't want to do what God's called us to do, whether it be parenting or husbandry or whatever, right? There's something that God's called us to do. He's charged us with that. And we complain and we complain and we complain. And then when we actually give our obedience to what he's asking, it's so much better. It is. You know what I mean? But during the whole time, we're kicking and screaming, you know? <laughs> no, and absolutely. And I, that's where I kind of feel like, for instance, like when I was drinking, mm-hmm. you know, I felt like, you know, God himself or the Holy Spirit told me, hey, you need to stop. Like, enough. You've you've had your fun with it. Leave it. And, you know, I was fighting and kicking it and screaming the whole time. And then, you know, probably I want to say like a month or two into like not drinking anymore. That's when I started seeing everything unfold. I'm like, Mm -hmm. dude, this is awesome. I can get so much more done now because I'm not always sluggish Mm -hmm. or have so much, you know, foggy memory. It's like, dude, like, this is awesome. Like now I have more energy for my kids than what I did before. Now that you now I don't want to call recovering, but healed from from alcoholism, right? right? Set free, I should say. Right. right? Um, now that you've been set free from that desire to do that, do you got to watch yourself as far as like who you hang around with and stuff like that? Because one of the big things that my father used to tell me is show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are, you know, so. How important has it been for your recovery now and and just being a better father to actually choose people that you want to surround yourself with that actually want your best interest? Right. So on that one, it it can be a little tough at times because that, you know, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Well, growing up, I knew nothing but punks and drunks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I still know them to this day, but. I mean, I'm not going to, how do I say it? I'm not going to necessarily stop talking to these childhood friends of mine. I've known them for my whole life. The only thing I'm yeah. going to do is make the decision not to drink anymore. And yes. if they like it, even better. Then we'll continue being friends. It's not, and sorry, pal, I got to go because if all you want to do is hang out with that drunk version of Jesse, then I'm going to tell you right now, that drunk version is long gone. It ain't coming back anytime soon. And if you kind of set there for what it is, and I'm sorry, dude. You go your way, I go my way. But I mean, I've had to watch out a lot. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm currently, I mean, I'm, I'm dating again. I, okay. you know, I have a girlfriend. It's really serious. We've been with each other for over a year. And she was with me through all this when I did made the decision to, to stop it. Mm-hmm. And she was actually, you know, one of my biggest supporters. I mean, I had my support group that I have within, you know, the trade, but she was also, you know, a big one for me. And there was times where she was like, hey, let's go to a bar. I'm like, dude, no, I don't want to go to a bar because if we go to a bar, that means I'm going to start drinking. Mm-hmm. You know, it's everywhere. Everyone's doing it. And I'm probably going to be the only one not doing it. No, I can't go. It, the temptation's everywhere. The devil's everywhere is what I tell her. Yeah. She's like, I'll tell you what. She's like, we'll go. And if you start feeling uncomfortable for any reason, we will leave right now. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll take you up on it. We went the first time and I was fine with it. Why? Because she told me, hey, if you start feeling, you know, if you start feeling weird or bad about it, then we'll leave. And yeah. that kind of went with me a long way because most people would have been like, we don't need you here. All right, bye. I got to go then. But yeah, I mean, I've had a watch who I hang out with and whatnot, but it hasn't been too crazy hard for me because this is what I want. Yeah. I'm not doing this for everyone else. I'm doing this for me and my kids. I like that you said that, Jesse. You're doing it for you and your children. Exactly. You know, yeah. right now, like like I said, I I went through the, a crazy separation a few years ago, mm-hmm. which took a big toll out of me. And, you know, I had, while going through it, I had, you know, very significant people die. While I was going through it, my grandma, my grandpa passed, an old mentor of mine passed, you know, but it's like, I, you know, 
it's like I said, you know, this is more for me than anything. Yeah. I was lost. I'm still, if you want to say in the healing process in a sense, but I know what I want is then, then that's not to drink again. Mm -hmm. So, so far, because I know that this is what I want. It's, and it's like I said, you know, you go back and if you really want something, you're going to make it work. I've made it work so far. There's been times where I have been tempted to want to drink, but hey, that's not a worry. It happens to everybody. What do I do? I get on my phone and open up the Bible app, start reading it. Mm. And like nothing, it goes away. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing, man. Thank you for sharing that because uh, temptations do come. No, they do. And they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But you don't need to you don't need to give it to them. You know what I mean? And I, I like that you gave that example of what you do to overcome them temptations you know you open up your bible app you know and exactly. get into god's word you know you know like i said if that works great it's been working for me another thing that works for me too is you know what i'm a month in why am i going to ruin it now mm -hmm. i'm two months in why am i going to ruin it now i'm three then six it's like why stop like you've been doing so good keep going and that's mm. another thing that's been helping me out too you know Mm -hmm. what other bit of advice can you give to single fathers out there jesse so with are... single fathers one of the best advice i can give to you guys mm -hmm. is i know we come home tired i know we're you know we come home late we're tired we work long hours if you can give your kids that 10 15 minutes of playtime I can swear to you that that playtime goes a long way rather than you saying, hey, I'm tired, but here tomorrow we'll go to the store and buy this toy. No, nah, that toy is only going to last maybe 10, 15 minutes of fun. When you come into that door and you give them 10, 15 minutes of your you know, good time and you're playing with them, they will love you forever. And it doesn't take much. It does not take much at all. You can have a little Nerf gun battle in the living room. Play with their toys. Ask them questions about what they've been doing. You know, that's one of the pieces of advice I can give. Another one is don't give up. Like, I don't know what your situations might be, you know, custodial, but don't stop being a parent. Don't stop being a father to your children, because at the end of the day, your children are going to look for you. You're their prime example of how a father should be. Mm -hmm. And if they're seeing you coming home angry, drunk, or whatever the case may be. Come on. That's not a good example to set. But, you know, like I've always said, you know, one thing you got to do too, more importantly, is cherish every moment that you have with your kids. Because like I stated earlier, you know, in a snap of a finger, it goes by so fast. You know, yeah, you got to cherish every moment of it. Absolutely. Time is finite, man. And it goes so quick, like you said, um, Jesse, I want to end this conversation here after this uh, question I have for you. Um, looking back, what would you say has been the most rewarding aspect of being a father and provider for your children? Looking back at it, honestly, would have to see them growing up. Mm. That's one of the most rewarding things for me, because, like, for example, at the beginning of this year. I made a choice to start bringing God into my life. Yeah. And I started take, I started going to church every Sunday. I started taking my boys probably like about a week or two. You know, my son knows that I play on that, that play, that I open up that Bible app. What does yeah. he do? He goes on Spotify to find, you know, Bible related stuff to play it for us. And I'm like, whoa, dude, no way. Mm -hmm. Dude, I was so happy and joyful when he did that. Man, absolutely. That's just a testament to but your influence as a father. You I know, mean, it's when you get to see what inputs you've have had in them. That's when you're like, man, that's so awesome. I'm glad I did what I did. I'm glad I went that extra mile to have 50 50 custody of my boys and be a part of their lives. Mm, man, I'm just super proud of you, brother. You thank you, brother. Just in the time I've known you, I, I've seen you change leaps and bounds and i've just seen god do a tremendous work in your life I mom mean, he has and honestly dave i can't thank you more than enough for 
that one day when I called you in April and you said, you know what, dude, you need to read the Bible. You need to start looking for the Lord's word. And you referred me in that direction. And everything has been good so far. And it's going to continue to be good. I have my boys. I have God. I have my mm -hmm. career. I have my girlfriend. I have, you know, all the people in my life, positive and good. I mean, what more do I want in life? Hmm. Man, no, that's a, that's truly a testament, brother. And I, I know that this episode is going to touch the hearts and minds of those that are, are listening right now, because that's what we're called to do, bro. We're no, called to and, bring hope. And I, and I hope it does, because if it's one thing that I promised myself and God, when I was going through my separation is if I can tell somebody my story of what I went through and how I overcame, and if it helps that one person, then I did something right in my life. Mm. absolutely our testimony yeah. is powerful brother it is man well okay. jesse how can someone reach out to you to get a hold of you um if they have questions or, or just just even want a prayer from you or whatever you know what i mean can you share that with us yeah so i'm on facebook jesse dorado j-e-s-s-e-d-o-r-a-d-o -S -S -E -E mm -hmm. on facebook i'm also on um instagram it's a long one. I'm not going to spell this one out, but <laughs> it's Shovelhead Skip McBundy. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, you know, hear a little more about my story, feel free to do so. I mean, if you need to, you know, if you're a single father and you got someone you need to talk to or you're going through, you know, bad times in your life, call me, hit me up. I'll be more than happy to talk to you because, like I said, I promised myself and God that I would help any other father out there that was going through the same struggles that I would. So please, by all means, reach out to me. There Thank you have it, folks. Um, straight out of his mouth, he is offering his time. Time being the most finite, most precious thing, precious commodity that we have. And he's willing to give his time to be able to, to listen to you, to give you advice, to offer you hope in prayer. You know, so take Absolutely. advantage of it, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jesse, for just having the courage to come on this episode of the Lineman Chronicles. Absolutely. I appreciate you and uh, keep doing what you're doing, brother. Make me proud. No, absolutely. If I can say one more thing before I leave. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 22, 6 says, start children off the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Mm. Absolutely. That's a charge right there from God, man. It is. That is that's what we need to do as fathers. Absolutely. Well, right on, brother. God bless you. Thank you for this. Uh, God bless you, too, brother. Thank you for it all. I, I can't thank you more than enough for making me the man that I am today. Yeah, all glory goes to God, brother. <laughs> I'm just a dumb line. Man. <laughs> no, God yeah. sent you to us for a reason, bro. I'll tell you that right now. He sent you to us for a reason. And it's working. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right on, brother. Glad to hear, man. Well, you have a great night, bro. You too, brother. God bless and be God safe. Bless. Like I said, reach out to me, guys. You know, God bless all of you. God bless our single parents, our single linemen, and our line wives out there. Amen. I can't agree more.